and we are back. This is NHL 18 Calgary Flames Franchise Mode, uh, episode 33 here at the Calgary Flames as we continue on here in the 2019-2020 season. Uh, we just finished wrapping up the uh, 2020 trade deadline there on February 28th, and it was a pretty big, uh, pretty big deadline, if you will. Um, it was Probably a more difficult trade deadline than we had uh, anticipated uh, for that. It took up an entire episode. Uh, it did take up episode 32. Uh, that entire episode was just the uh, trade deadline. I was definitely not expecting uh, the trade deadline to fill an entire episode, uh, but that was the case there in uh, uh, episode number 32. Uh, excuse me. Uh, so yeah, we uh, we made three, three trades here uh, on trade deadline day. Uh, going into trade a deadline day, we wanted to address our depth up front. Uh, we wanted to address our depth on the back end. And we wanted to bring in a, a veteran backup goalie uh, who could help give us uh, some rest for John Gibson. So uh, we first of all, we went out and we got our four that we wanted. Uh, we went out to uh, Vegas and we got uh, forward Eric Holla there from the Vegas Golden Knights, as you can see. Uh, in return, we uh, sent uh, back... Uh, for Peter uh, Shiralik, or however you say his name. Uh, we had just claimed him about uh, two weeks prior off of waivers. Uh, and I forget from who, but we did just claim him, so... Uh, we traded, uh, oh, excuse me, no, that was that was part of the other trade, sorry. Uh, Eric Halla went to uh, the Vegas Golden Knights and, uh, uh, or went from the Vegas Golden Knights to the Calgary Flames, there we go, uh, to the Calgary Flames. Uh, in exchange, we sent a, a 2020 third round pick, uh, our third round pick in 2020 to Vegas, uh, a 2020 third round pick that we acquired from Nashville to Vegas, and a 2020 fourth round pick, that was our pick. So, two third round picks and a fourth for Eric Halla, uh, that that wasn't too bad of a trade. I believe he's 82. He gives us some center depth there in the middle uh, and, and gives us uh, much needed bottom six depth down there. Allowed us to bump down Mark Jankowski. Uh, and then we went out and uh, traded uh, 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 for a backup goalie and a defenseman in one trade. So we made a pretty big trade here with the uh, Anaheim Ducks. Uh, so what happened is we acquired goaltender Michael Northworth uh, uh, and defenseman, veteran defenseman Brooks Orpik, uh, a 2020 second round pick from Anaheim and a 2020 fourth round pick from Anaheim. Uh, both of those picks being the Ducks uh, picks in 2020. Uh, in exchange, we sent for Peter Shirelik, who, uh, like I said, we just claimed off of waivers a couple days prior. Uh, and we also sent... Uh, uh, Goaltender Corey, uh, Corey, Nick Schneider, goaltender Nick Schneider, uh, and a 2020 first round pick uh, that we had acquired from the St. Louis Blues uh, a little bit earlier. So, again, just quickly, Neuvirth or pick a second and a fourth for uh, that guy we just claimed off waivers, uh, Nick Schneider, a prospect goalie, and a first that we got from St. Louis. So, not too bad of a trade there, uh, but the one I liked uh, the most, I think that's going to impact us the most, is this one right here, Eric Halla, 28 years of age, uh, 82 overall. Uh, but again, it's his stats right here. We took a look at that in the last video 17 goals, 22 assists. He's very under. Underrated, uh, playing in the third line row with Minnesota, or excuse me, with Vegas, uh, and so he comes in now and uh, will play, hopefully play that role with us. He's playing with two really good guys, Spencer Fru and Tyler Ennis have had great years. On the bottom line, though, Mark Jankowski, Andrew Mangiapane, and Lee Stepniak have not had good years. The other trade we made uh, just at the end there of the video. Uh, I made it off camera when I was trying to uh, work with our cap space. Is I traded forward Chris Versteeg uh, to the Columbus Blue Jackets for a uh, 2021 third round pick. So, uh, not bad. Uh, I, I did like the trades we made. Uh, like I said, it was a little bit harder to make these trades than I expected. Uh, you can see here we brought in Brooks Orpik, 78 overall. Uh, unfortunately, means we lost Rasmus Anderson down to the minors. Uh, but like I explained in the last video, we will uh, try and call Rasmus Anderson up uh, whenever we can. But because of cap reasons, uh, we had to... Uh, uh, we had to Excuse me, we had to uh, have Rasmus Anderson stay down in the minors, so we will roll with uh, Slater Cuckoo, Brooks Orpik. We also have uh, Oliver Chillington there as well. And then when we come to goal, uh, this is what we look like. So we put uh, we put down uh, uh, um, uh, Anton Hodobin uh, down here in the minors. So Anton Hodobin, who was 78, wasn't getting the job done as a backup goalie, so we brought in an 82 in Michael Neuwirth, uh to help give John Gibson some rest, who's already played 60 games uh, for us this season, so we need to give Gibson some rest. Uh, but there is uh, Neuwirth who's already played 50 games for the uh, Anaheim Ducks this season. Uh, so that was a, a pretty big trade for us to bring him in. 
uh, because uh, he's played all their games. 9-2-4 in 50 games so far with Anaheim this season. Three shutouts. Not bad numbers. So that uh, just shows you that this guy is capable of uh, not only coming in and playing a couple of games here or there, but giving uh, John Gibson some extended uh, rest time. So we, can, we, we pretty much have a tandem now to run with. Obviously, Gibson is 10 times better, uh, but for the most part, uh, I, I, we should be able to, uh, providing Norrisworth does good, we should be able to roll with him uh, for the remainder of the season as well. So, uh, again, that is just a quick look at a quick recap of what happened in the last video. Uh, there, uh, we made three trades, as mentioned, uh, br uh, took out some uh, pieces, brought in some pieces, but uh, hopefully uh, we made the right choices. Uh, and hopefully this is uh, a roster that can help us win a Stanley Cup. But I think Eric Hall is a huge add there up front. So, uh, without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's get uh, right into the simming. Uh, just before episode 32 and episode 31, uh, we finished the months of January and February. Uh, they were probably uh, January. We went six, four, and one. Uh, so that was yeah, it was an okay month for us. But February was probably our worst month of our entire uh, franchise mode. We went three, eight, and one. Uh, we are riding a uh, what is that? A four-game losing streak. Uh, yeah, we're riding a four-game losing streak heading into this uh, final game of the month against the Islanders. Uh, and we have uh, lost. Uh, we've actually dropped uh, uh, seven of our last or six of our last seven. So we've really been uh, we've really been hurting here in the month of February. A massive of losing streak we got to snap that now uh, we went three eight and one as mentioned and because of that we have sunk in the standings uh, so when we come back here and look at the standings again this is just a quick recap because we haven't uh, done any simming since episode 31 uh, but uh, there we are 71 overall we used to hang on to the first wild card spot in the Western Conference uh, there was one point where we were first in our division and first in our conference now we hang on to a wild wild card spot so uh, we're no longer fighting for the president's trophy I think we're now fighting just to keep ourselves in the playoff race and then hopefully if we have a good month of March uh, maybe we can get ourselves back in the President's Trophy conversation. But first of all, we need to start winning games. So uh, let's get right up to this uh, next game against the Islanders. Uh, Eric Halla, Brooks Orpik making their Calgary Flames debuts as we get set here uh, to play the Islanders 29, 29, and 6. They're 500 on the season. Uh, John Tavares' old team. Uh, but we got, like I said, we got to snap this four game losing streak and we got to start stringing together some wins here. So first period looks like this Jordan Everly, Andrew Ladd, uh, the captain Mark Giordano gets on the board for us. Second period in Calgary. Uh, there we go. Jake Bean. Huge goal there. Tied up. Do we get the win here in the third period? Come on, Flames. Nothing. We're pushing this to overtime. Do we get the extra point that we need? Nothing. How about in the shootout? And it uh, looks like we do. Uh, so Blake Wheeler, Sean Monahan, and Johnny Gaudreau get the job done for us in the shootout. That is a huge way to snap our four-game losing streak. Like I said, six of our last seven uh, games we have lost. Uh, so this is a huge way to snap out of that funk. Hopefully this is the start of something good for the Calgary Flames. Excuse me, um, but yeah, that is uh, that's good to see there. Uh, obviously, us getting the win. John Gibson goes 9:05. Uh, we might try giving Northworth a game here uh, pretty soon, uh, but that's a good way to snap out of that uh, losing streak. So, like I said, we have to start uh, turning it around now. Hopefully, we can have a really, really good month of March after that poor month of February. Uh, but that's a good way to end off the month of February. We do give the extra point to the Islanders uh, at this point of year. You do not want to be giving up any uh, extra points to teams you're fighting with. But of course, uh, the Islanders are in the uh, other uh, conference, so. That's that is not a concern for us. So let's uh, quickly fix this skeleton here. Uh, we will uh, stay in North America. I can't remember. I think we're doing defensemen now. So let's do defensemen here uh, in the dub. Uh, we'll go for a month there. Uh, but now we got the Dallas Stars here at home. So uh, some big games coming up here for the Flames. Like I said, we just have to start worrying about uh, taking it one game at a time here, uh, getting some wins. Uh, we built a huge win there against the Islanders. Uh, can we continue it here against the Stars first period? There we go. Three huge goals. Jordano, Neil twice. That's what you like to see. Second period, Flames, nothing. Third period, do we hang on? Uh, we do. They get one more goal. Uh, but a three-goal first period uh, propels the Calgary Flames to a 3-1 to one victory. That's two straight wins. We're starting to get those wins that we need so that is good to see James Neal with a two uh, goal performance uh, that's good to see against one of his former teams 9-7-2 for John Gibson so I do want to give uh, Northworth a game here pretty soon but uh, Gibson is playing well so uh, that is good to see because I do believe uh, if I'm remembering back to episode 31 he had a, a poor stretch there in uh, 
in the month of February, and that was why we uh, we lost as many games as we did, because we really run on John Gibson. If Gibson's at the top of his game, our team seems to be at the top of their game, uh, so we really rely on John Gibson, uh, so it's good to see him on top of his game. So let's just take a look here. Columbus is a good team. Uh, Winnipeg is a pretty good team. Nashville, uh, they're pretty good too as well. Uh, Chicago's down there. So I think we'll give Northworth a Chicago game, but we'll probably give him one of these two back-to-back -back nights as well. So uh, let's do this Columbus game, though, first. Uh, we'll keep uh, Gibson in net here. Uh, like I said, winners of two straight. Uh, so let's see if we can just keep it going. We're not going to make any lineup changes. Uh, first period, Calgary Flames. Nothing. Second period, two goals. There we go. Andrew Mangiapane and Tyler Ennis with Eric Halla on their line. That's good to see. Hopefully Halla's getting in on uh, on uh, both of those goals. Third period, do we hang on? We do. We add another goal by Andrew Mangiapane. Uh, actually, Mangiapane is on the fourth line, so that's good to see. Uh, the fourth line uh, starting to turn it around. Uh, like I said, what happened is we, uh, we took out Cedric Parquet, who was having a horrible year. We took out Chris Versteek, who was having a horrible year. We took those two guys off the fourth line. We dropped down uh, 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 Mark Jankowski to that fourth line. We brought in Lee Stepnick here, who had a two-point night. Uh, brought them in there with Andrew Mangiapane, who has two goals. Hopefully, that turns around that fourth line. Uh, there's the shutout performance, by the way, for John Gibson, 26 saves. Um, but that fourth line was really, uh, I, for some reason, they were they were deep in the minuses. Uh, I don't know if they were even getting that much playing time, but for some reason, uh, our fourth line was struggling uh, mightily, and we needed to find an answer for that. So we, we fixed it. We took out two guys on that fourth line, uh, and we brought down Jankowski and added uh, Lee Stepniak to that fourth line, and then added Eric Kala to the third line. So I'm just hoping that all those changes to the bottom six that we made in the last episode uh, are good enough to... Uh, 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 to uh, 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 turn it around for us in our bottom six is what I'm trying to say because uh, that was just a horrible bottom six for us all season long. So uh, here we go. Uh, we are now uh, winners of three straight as we uh, head into Winnipeg against the Jets first period. There's Blake Wheeler, the former Jets captain, and that is a huge goal. I believe this is maybe his first game back to Winnipeg. Not too sure. A huge uh, second period. Lots of goals in this one. Tavares, Wheeler again. Gaudreau as well. They get goals from uh, Danano and Como. A third period. They get one more, but we do hang on. Patrick Laine does, does make it interesting, but we do hang on. So that is four straight wins for the Calgary Flames. A massive win. I want to take John Gibson out of the net, but uh, he's rolling right now. Shutout in his last game there. Uh, a shutout, excuse me, in his last game. Goes 9-1-7 in this one. Uh, you know what? I'm going to keep uh, Gibson in net. I wanted to give... Uh, give uh, Neuforth his first start here against Nashville, uh, but since uh, since uh, we put Gibson uh, back in goal since the trade deadline, we have gone 4-0, uh, and, oh, uh, and Gibson has been pr uh, playing pretty well in all four of these games, so uh, I think we're going to keep, we're just going to ride Gibson until he has a poor game, but then we'll start to get Neuforth in here, because we do have to give Gibson some rest, who's now played uh, 64 games for us uh, so far in the season, uh, and we still have pretty much the entire month of March, excuse me, and uh, April, uh, half of April to go as well, or the first week of April. Uh, but anyways, let's get into back-to-back uh, -back nights here against Nashville. We're not making any lineup changes because we are winners of four straight, and we're trying to get those wins that we need. Uh, first period here in Smashville, nothing. Second period, come on, Flames. Uh, they get a goal from Forsberg. We get one from Johnny Gaudreau. Huge third period here against a Western Conference foe. Come on, Calgary Flames. There it is. Andrew Mangiapane stays red hot, beats Pekka Rainey. That is a huge 2-1 to one win for the Calgary Flames. Five straight wins after going uh, on a four-game losing streak into the trade deadline. We have come out with a five-game winning streak. That is what they really like to see. What a turnaround for the Calgary Flames. I, I do hate the inconsistency because uh, it's like a roller coaster. But when you're on the good side of that uh, inconsistency, you're on the uh, roller uh, the upside of the roller coaster. Excuse me. Uh, that is uh, what you like to see. Obviously, uh, if we could just hang on and keep winning games. So nine five eight there for John Gibson in that one again. Uh, I got to keep Gibson in net. I got to keep the lineups the same. We are uh, on a five game winning streak here. Uh, we're just rolling. So I'm just going to see if we can just keep on rolling. Uh, we got the Chicago Blackhawks, a team that is below 500. It uh, doesn't look like the Hawks will make the playoffs this year. We have to take advantage of these teams and take the two points from here. They get an early goal. Bride to bring it. Do we fight back in the first? We do. Two huge goals from Brody and Ennis. Second period looks like this. They get two goals uh, as well as we get one. James Neal for us. Tied going into the third period. Another Western Conference team we have to find a way to get these points out of come on flames uh we have tied it up again so monahan and uh Paka. do we get the extra point that we much much
badly need here for the Calgary Flames. Come on, Flames, overtime, a nothing shootout, and we do. We get the shootout winner off the sticks of Johnny Gaudreau and Sean Monaghan. Uh, they get one from Patty Kane, but that is now six straight wins for the Calgary Flames, so that is good to see. Uh, the Flames just keep on rolling red hot right now for the Calgary Flames. Two-point nights for Brody, Neil, Monahan, Kachuk. That second line uh, doing really well for us there. Uh, and then uh, uh, Gibson goes 8-8-9. Eight, eight, so I think this is where we will take out John Gibson. He slips uh, below the 900 mark for the first time in this uh, six-game winning streak. He has been red hot. But, uh, ooh, well, we do have the Coyotes, though. This is, I believe, one of the top teams in our division. So uh, maybe we'll keep him in net here for this Coyote game because we need a win. This is a, uh, a divisional opponent that we have to get the two points against. So we will probably stick with Gibson in this game. Let's just take a look quickly now. After that six-game winning streak, let's see uh, where we are in the standings. So there we are. We have uh, obviously uh, skyrocketed back up in the standings. We're now at 83 points, uh, just, uh, what, eight points behind Vancouver for tops in our division. Uh, just one point, though, still ahead of Edmonton. Uh, we've kind of pulled away a a little bit there from Arizona and Anaheim so that is good to see uh, what's the central look like 82 for St. Louis 75 yeah so we're uh, we're ahead of the Saint uh, of the uh, uh, the central excuse me uh, what's the uh, the east is still pretty strong Washington and Philly uh, New York as well uh, and yeah the the uh, Atlantic is pretty strong as well you can see Tampa Bay is leading the way 97 points already for the Tampa Bay Lightning that is unbelievable uh, so they will probably lock the president's trophy up here pretty soon but the defending Stanley Cup champions, but uh, no, that's good to see that we are uh, on a six-game winning streak, and that has helped us uh, get back up in the stanks, but we have to win this game against the Coyotes, because even though uh, they are down at 78, we still have to continue to push ourselves away from the Coyotes. Any divisional opponents, whenever we play from this point on, whenever we play Anaheim, Arizona, Edmonton, or Vancouver, these are all games we have to win, so we have any remaining games against those teams, we have to find a way to win them in regulation. That's going to determine if we make the playoffs. So we, uh, you can see... Uh, already we have two games against the coyotes in this month we have one there against the canucks so these are going to be massive massive games so uh let's get right into this uh uh arizona game and then i think we'll give a uh, noiseworth his first uh, game against the montreal Canadiens. but let's get this a uh, huge divisional game uh, out of the way here against the coyotes can we make it seven straight against the uh coyotes come on calgary flames first period three goals blake wheeler spencer food james neal they get one from keller second period uh we do get another one spencer Fu, his second of the game. Do we hang on in the third period? We got a three goal lead. We do hang on. Four to one. That's the way I like to see it. For the Calgary Flames, seven straight wins. This is incredible. What a way to respond from that horrible month of February where we went three, eight, and one. Uh, so two-point night for Spencer Fu, two goals for him, Dougie Hamilton and uh, Jake Bean picking up two assists each, and a 9-5-5 save percentage for John Gibson. I don't know. This is a tough one. Do you want to take Gibson out of the net? He's like been red hot except for the Chicago game he has been red hot in the seven game winning streak I it's pretty hard to take him out of net right now so I think we will leave him in net I mean I know he's now riding what 67 games and I really wanted to uh, I brought in Northworth just for that reason so we could give him some rest but my god he is playing out of his mind right now and we are just we are going streaking so I mean how do you take a guy like Gibson out of net right now so you know what we'll leave him in net uh, why make any lineup changes when you're on a seven-game winning streak? So here we go. First period, Flames and Habs. And it is scoreless after 20. Second period, there we go. We get one. They get one. Gallagher and Wheeler. Do we uh, get a huge third period for the Calgary Flames? Come on, can we make it eight? And uh, we do. A 3-2 to two win for the Calgary Flames. The game winner off of the stick, I believe, of Johnny Goodrow. A uh, goal from Tyler Ennis, who stays red hot as well. Uh, they get one from Charles Hodon. But the Calgary Flames have now won eight straight games in a row to start off the month of March. What a... I don't even know what to say. What a, uh, a completely... Uh, unbelievable streak the Calgary Flames have put together here. So uh, that is huge. Another two-point night for Gaudreau, Monahan, and Hamilton. And uh, John Gibson, 9-3-3. He is just rolling red hot. So that is eight straight wins for Gibson and the Flames. And we're just still rolling here. So, I mean, this is incredible. We are undefeated right now in the month of March. And that final game in February there. I mean, this is... Wow, we just got to keep on finding a way to win here. So uh, we are already up to 41 wins on the season. We have to just keep uh, finding a way to get the points out of all these games. Finding ways, excuse me, to get the points out of all these games. So we got the Rangers now. Again, I'm not making any lineup changes until we lose the game because this is just incredible. Uh, we are pushing for lucky number nine now. Uh, 
do we get uh, Cloud9 here against the New York Rangers, uh, the Calgary Flames. Two goals, Gaudreau and Tavares. Tavares has been really quiet during this winning strike, I have to say. Chris Kreider responds, do we hang on in the third period? Oh, they tie it up. Chris Kreider, second of the hockey game. Do we get the win in overtime? Come on, Flames. Yes, Jake Bean. Jake Bean with the game winner. It is nine straight games for the Calgary Flames. Unbelievable. This is the way to go. On cloud nine are the Calgary Flames. Two point nights once again for Monaghan and Gaudreau. Monaghan and Gaudreau have just been unbelievable during this uh, nine game winning streak. John Gibson obviously has probably been the uh, first star of the nine game winning streak. Uh, nine to nine there. Uh, John Tavares has been quiet, but you know what? As long as we're winning, who cares? Who cares who's putting up the points? I mean, as long as we are winning. Like nine straight games. We now have a chance to go into T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas and win a 10th straight game coming out of the trade deadline. And it will be Eric Halla facing his former team. So what better time for Eric Halla to score his first goal as a Calgary Flame than against his former team? We can do it right now. In T or he can do it right now uh, in T-Mobile Arena. And hopefully we can make it 10 straight here. So here we go. Flames, Knights looking for our 10th straight. Ooh, and we're not off to a good start. Uh, so former uh, Golden Knight James Neal does get us on the board. But then they get three unanswered from Hayden Fleury, uh, Jason Garrison, and Alex Tuck. Uh, can we fight back in this one? We're only down by two goals. Second period. There it is. The game is tied. Dougie Hamilton, TJ Brody beating Mark andre Fleury. We still have a chance to make this 10 in a row. We need a huge third period right here. Calgary Flames. And we're going to overtime. Oh my god. Here we go. Do we push it to 10? Do we push our winning streak to 10 in overtime? How about in a shootout? And we do. Another Huge shootout win for the Calgary Flames. We've had about three or four shootout wins uh, in this 10-game uh, winning streak. And uh, uh, we've won them all. So that's pretty good. Uh, Jake Bean, Johnny Gaudreau, another shootout winner. He may be Mr. Shootout. Sean Monaghan may be Mr. Overtime. John Tavares as well. Johnny Gaudreau might be Mr. Shootout. He's getting it done when it matters the most in the shootout. So that is good to see. Monaghan, another two-point night, as well as Kachuk, and uh, John Gibson goes 9-1-2. So that is huge. The Calgary Flames are on top of the NHL with a 10-game winning streak. We have to be the hottest team right now in the league. I mean, this is incredible. 10-0-0 since the trade deadline. This is unreal. Uh, so let's see if we can uh, push it uh, past double digits or past uh, 10, the 10 mark, and see if we can continue the double digits here with the win streak. We've got Colorado now. And uh, then we got LA and uh, Arizona coming up. So a couple divisional opponents. But uh, let's see if we can push it to 11 against the Colorado Avalanche. That's a good start. Lee Stepney have two goals in the first period. Second period. There we go. Andre Mangiapane, that fourth line getting it done in this one. And uh, we get one more. Johnny Gaudreau finishes off the game as the Flames go 4 nothing against the Avalanche. Put up a four spot. John Gibson, another shutout. This is just unbelievable. 26 safe shutout for John Gibson. I just, I don't even know what to say. This is like a completely dream scenario to come out of. Oh, oh just as I say that, just as I say that, uh, we get a massive injury or a massive loss uh, as we lose Dougie Hamilton till the beginning of April. So that's about a two-week span uh, that we'll be without Hamilton. So uh, let's jump into our lines quickly here. Uh, good thing is that gives us a chance to hopefully call up... Uh, uh, Rasmus Anderson, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I know, I guess we got Oliver Chillington, so we can't. So I will put Bean up there. Uh, put the veteran Brooks or pick there. We'll bring in Oliver Chillington. Um, ooh, I don't want to substitute him in all lines. We'll put Chillington there. Uh, and then we just got to fix our power play line. So we'll bring uh, Bean up there. Uh, we're looking for another guy here. Uh, let's give Eric Hollis some power play time, because that's why we brought him in. He can work on the second unit there. Uh, whoops, go back up to special teams. Uh, so Hamilton was obviously in quite a few lines for us, uh, rightfully so. Uh, so you're going to see Brooks Orpik get an increase in ice time, uh, so that will be good. Uh, Brooks Orpik is a defensive defenseman, so I am very comfortable putting uh, him in on the penalty kill. Uh, the power play, obviously, you stick with a guy like Eric Halla instead, who's got more offensive potential. Uh, but when it comes to this penalty kill here, I am pretty comfortable with Brooks Orpik, despite him being a 78. He is a veteran defensive defenseman. Obviously, when Dougie Hamilton comes back, that's going to be his spot. But uh, right now, uh, that's, what, that's kind of why we went out and got a depth defenseman. Uh, not only a, a, a veteran depth defenseman, but a guy who's a defensive defenseman. Uh, you look at Brooks Orpik right here. Uh, oh, and it's not going to show his stats. Are we going to look at it? Nope. 
uh, so we can't look at his stats in here, but uh, he is, uh, he's is he got really good defensive stats, so that's what I liked uh, about Orpik, uh, but obviously Hamilton, that's a huge loss for the Calgary Flames. Uh, we'll go with Brody here. Da -da 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 -da. So there we go, Brody. Okay, so that is, uh, oh, he was in there. Oh my god. Uh, da -da -da. Who's not in? Oh, James Neal's not in. Not in overtime, so. We have not been getting it done. That's the funny thing. We haven't been getting it done in overtime uh, during this 10-game, uh, 11-game winning streak. Uh, but we have been getting it done uh, uh, in the shootout, like I said, with Johnny Gaudreau. So, uh, so we do lose Hamilton till the first. So that is about a week span. Actually, if you look at it there, that's going to be four games. LA, Arizona, Vancouver, and a mini Minnesota, excuse me. And then uh, we should get Dougie Hamilton back before the St. Louis game, uh, as we only have... Uh, four games after that remaining in the season so uh really that's not a lot so uh four games uh let's see here four games five six seven eight we only have eight games remaining i didn't realize we were that close to the end of the season so uh, obviously uh, these games all matter so uh, you can already see the canucks have locked up a playoff spot 97 points there we are with 93 we shouldn't be too far off from uh clinching a playoff spot as well obviously that 11 game winning streak has helped with that uh that's good to see you can even see that we have separated ourselves a bit from uh from the edmonton oilers now who sit with 89 points 80 for the arizona coyotes i don't think we have to worry about the coyotes or the ducks catching us from this point on uh, obviously it'd still be nice to win that game against the coyotes here coming up um but i don't think we have to worry it's not as big of a game anymore as it uh projected to be uh obviously we don't have to worry about anybody below edmonton i think edmonton can still uh catch us uh we can still possibly catch vancouver um but uh we're gonna have to there's a game coming up against vancouver uh but they have already clinched uh when we look at the other conferences uh, just quickly the central nobody's clinched uh, the atlantic tampa's clinched uh nobody in philly so uh whoops what did i click on or nobody in the uh the uh, Metropolitan. I was looking at Philly. Uh, so anyways, uh, let's get right back into it. We are riding a 11-game winning streak. We have the Los Angeles Kings here who are at the bottom of our uh, Pacific Division standings. We are without Dougie Hamilton for the first time uh, uh, for what looks like to be a four-game stretch without Dougie Hamilton. It's the first period Calgary Flames, nothing second period Calgary Flames. Uh, they get two goals. Pearson twice. We get one from John Tavares. We have one period left to possibly push this winning streak to 12 or else our 11 game winning streak is snapped and the third period it snapped five to one los angeles kings okay so that is a really bad way to snap an 11 game winning streak hey i'm happy 11 games that was incredible uh sucks obviously it had to it had to end eventually we knew that uh, but uh you know it sucks to end it this way very uh, very bad uh, night for the third line who struggles uh and then uh, our bottom defensive pairing struggles as well i think it was just a bad night all around a uh, gibson obviously a bad night there so a uh, Northworth does get a chance now to come in uh, but hey you can't uh, you can't go wrong with an 11 game winning streak nothing but positives from that uh 11 game winning streak uh so we do get a loss here like i said had to end eventually uh but hey i mean we're second in our division we like that was an incredible streak we went on here look at that that is just incredible 11 games in a row huge wins for the Calgary Flames like they were I was just you just you don't see that big of streaks anymore in today's day and age because it's just so hard to win consecutive games back to back let to let alone to do it 11 times in a row uh, those are just the very rare nowadays so uh, anyways like I said this game against Arizona is really not that important anymore the game against Vancouver is now important because uh, we're chasing them uh, we do clinch a playoff spot so despite our loss there to the Los Angeles Kings, the Calgary Flames have clinched a playoff spot for what I believe is the third year in a row. It is, because this is our third year with the franchise mode. This will be our third straight year uh, going back to the Stanley Cup playoffs. So not a bad way for the Calgary Flames uh, to, to to end the night after a 5-1 loss to the uh, LA Kings. We find out that we have clinched the playoff spot for the third straight season in a row. Uh, so that's obviously good to see. Uh, that's nice to see the X there beside the Calgary Flames. But now we just got to fight for home ice, uh, obviously, and uh, possibly still first in our division. Uh, so it's really about who we will play now. Um, you know, we can still technically catch the Canucks, who set at 99. We set at 93. There's Edmonton now, just two points back of us. So Edmonton's still on our tails. So we need to still continue to get the wins here. But we are uh, right now, you know, the playoffs started right now. Uh, uh, with seven games remaining, if it started right now, we are facing the Edmonton Oilers for the Battle of Alberta uh, for the first time uh, since... Oh, no, we did play Edmonton a couple of years back. But we will face Edmonton uh, in the playoffs. I'm just looking down here. 
Uh, yeah, we, we faced Edmonton in the 2018 Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, we beat them 4 nothing. We swept them in uh, round two, uh, or in round one, excuse me. So we did play them in the first round uh, two seasons ago. Uh, we did sweep them. Uh, but obviously, uh, this will be a really good rematch of the Battle of Alberta if it happens again this way. Uh, so it's shaping up to be like it did exactly two years ago. Uh, but like I said, we still have a bit of hockey to play before then. So let's see if we can uh, possibly chase Vancouver for the uh, top spot in our division. I'd rather play uh, one of the wildcard teams. I'm just trying to look at who they are. Arizona's a wildcard team. Nashville. Ooh, Nashville might be tough, though. Uh, so let's make a couple lineup changes after that 5-1 loss, and then we'll end off the month here in this episode uh, right before the playoffs. So Hala, NSFU, ah, uh, da-da-da-da. Uh, let's try, uh, no, you know what, let's leave that. They just had one bad game. We'll make all, one change here, and that's uh, Michael Northworth. Give him his first game. I did not expect us to give us, give him his first uh, game this late uh, since we got him at the trade at deadline. Uh, this is exactly why we went out and got him, is so he can come in now. Uh, now that we have clinched, I think we'll give Gibson uh, quite a few games off here. So uh, Northworth will probably run with him uh, most of the rest of the way. Uh, we don't. We also want to prevent uh, Gibson from getting injured as well. So a huge uh, game here against the Coyotes. Step on and Duclair get them on the board. Neil for us. Second period, nothing. Third period, do we fight back? Uh, we do, but Max Domi scores the game winner. So we've now lost back-to-back -back games, coming off an 11-game winning streak. Uh, not what you like to see, uh, but uh, hopefully we can find a way to win the final six. Uh, 900 for Michael Northworth in his uh, Calgary Flames debut. Uh, not too too bad. I think we'll stick with him. See what he's got in one more game here. Oh, actually, you know what? We got the Canucks. Uh, let's put Gibson back in that for this game against the Canucks. Uh, but I think Vancouver's pulled pretty far away from us now. I don't know if we catch Vancouver uh, now that we've lost two straight games. But let's uh, let's give Gibson this game against Vancouver, and then we'll roll with, uh, probably with Michael Northworth for the final five games. But uh, let's get uh, let's get this Vancouver game going here and uh, see if we can. Uh, you know, I guess if the Canucks lose out the season and we win out, uh, we could probably catch them for tops in the Pacific. Uh, but I think uh, I think they have the Pacific Division title uh, for sure. So uh, let's, let's try this uh, game here. Let's see if we can get the win. Like I said, we got to snap out of this two-game losing streak. Uh, first period here, Calgary Flames, TJ Brody, Blake Wheeler. Uh, second period, they tied the game up off of Brock Besser. Huge third period here. Come on, Calgary. Huge third period. Come on, Flames. Uh, it's tied. Hoffman and Wheeler. So we're going overtime. Both teams get a point. Overtime, nothing. Mr. Shooter, Johnny Gaudreau. Uh, no, they get two goals. Granlin and Hoffman, they get the two points. We do get the one, uh, but it does not look like we will catch Vancouver. So uh, that's unfortunate. It's okay, though. Uh, like I said, we still have a chance to finish second in our division uh, there and get home ice. Uh, Gaudreau, three-point night. John Tavares, three-point night. Uh, uh, Wheeler, two-point night. Uh, Michael, or John Gibson goes 9-1-2 in what might be his final performance of the regular season with only five games left. Uh, I think we'll stick with, um, oops, we'll stick with Michael Norberth to give uh, Gibson some rest here. Uh, so Dougie Hamilton's ready to come back one game earlier than ex expected, so that is good to see. Uh, so five games left. I'm not going to worry too, too much about uh, the rest of the standings, uh, but let's go like this. Let's put uh, Hamilton back in here. We'll play the five games out with the lineup that is uh edit scouting assignment sure oh where do you want to go how about you go to russia this time lots of forwards in russia let's do a month in russia well let's finish up these five games here uh hopefully we can win out and uh solidify our spot in the stanley cup playoffs like i said uh, we're not catching vancouver anymore but hey we just got to uh see if we can finish with home ice advantage this is not a good way to finish off the season though my god Four goals in the second period there for the Minnesota Wild. Uh, they close out with two more goals. Beat a six to one. We're getting clobbered here. This is un, uh, this is not good. Uh, what did we go wrong here? You you want to finish the season strong, even though we've locked up a playoff spot thanks to an 11 game winning streak. You still want to finish off strong. So this looks like it's just another bad night. Uh, Gibson does have to come in in relief of uh, Northworth in this one. Uh, both goalies really just not uh, faring well in this one. Uh, so let's see if we can put that one behind us. And another injury. So see, this is the this is the worst time to get injuries. James Neal, one of our top six forwards, is out till the 6th of April. Luckily, it's not a long injury, uh, but we just can't afford injuries at this time of year. So uh, let's put uh, let's put Mangiapane up there. 
uh, we do get a chance to bring in da -da -da -da, Cedric Parquet. Uh, first time he will come in since uh, the trade deadline since we took him out. So, um, you know, I really wouldn't, most cases, I wouldn't worry about the lineup, but uh, we do have to start winning some games here to finish off the season. Uh, da -da 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 Let's see here, what are we going here? Uh, four to four. We'll put Spencer Fu in uh, his position here. This is a pain in the ass that every time a player gets injured, you have to do this. This is just unreal. Uh, Hamilton can come back in on overtime, three on three. Uh, yeah, we'll keep Giordano down there with Brody. Okay, so we only have four games left, uh, but we are on a four game losing streak after that 11 game winning streak so uh, is that what it is yeah one two three four yeah so we gotta find a way to a way to start winning have we only got four games left we just lost four games can we win the final four games of the season uh yeah that's just that inconsistency i mean win 11 straight games then lose uh four four yeah but uh it is it's that inconsistency that's really hurting uh hurting us right now uh here in the final final stretch that is but uh, when we actually take a look here at the month of uh month of march uh you know we really could have won out the month of march here um you know obviously that 11 game winning streak uh that was carried over from the uh, month before there uh, after the trade deadline uh but then we went uh, 10 uh 3 and 1 uh here in the month of march so obviously that helped us lock up a playoff spot but uh, it's the final four games here in april that we're going to see if we can uh, uh help solidify our position there uh, in the stanley cup playoffs uh, let's just take a quick look uh, at the standings here. Uh, as, yeah, we have slipped down. That's what I thought. We have slipped down to a third uh, in our division. But, uh, but uh, you can see we're only one point behind Edmonton. So, uh, we're likely facing, like I said, uh, we're likely facing the Edmonton Oilers uh, in the Stanley Cup playoffs. It's likely going to be re a rematch of uh, two years ago when we swept Edmonton in the first round. Uh, but we, we would like that home ice advantage. Uh, obviously, you can see Arizona uh, is uh, far back of us there uh, at 86. And uh, Vancouver out of reach at 103. So, anyways, let's finish off this, uh, this final four game. Let's finish off the final month of April here in this episode. And then we'll end here uh, just before the Stanley Cup playoffs. But uh, actually here, I think we're going to make uh, a couple line changes. See if we can end this uh, four-game losing streak uh, here quickly. But uh, let's see if we can finish strong here and get that home ice advantage. Uh, so let's go edit lines here. I just want to make a couple minor changes maybe. Uh, let's see if we can get some done here. Um, we are dealing with injuries, so... That's going to be hard to, to make, uh, obviously, Neil's out. So really all we can do is bring in Oliver Chillington. Uh, but we'll do that because... Uh, let's go starting lines here. Um, just want a bit of a switch up. I don't know about... Uh, we haven't really paid much attention here to Slater Cuckoo in the last few games. Uh, Brooks Orpik uh, has come in. How many games has Orpik played for us now? 15 games. Yeah, so uh, he's come in and been a minus one. Ah, uh, da, da da Cuckoo. You know what? Let's try taking out Slater Cuckoo for a little bit. Let's put in Oliver Chillington. See if that makes a difference. We'll put him with the veteran Brooks Orpik. Uh, just make that minor change down there. Uh, but we'll see if we can uh, uh, find a way to uh, get the win here. And uh, who do we... Did we still have uh, uh, Gibson in net? Or I couldn't remember. Uh, let's go like this here. Because um, I do want to give Gibson the rest. But yeah, we have Neuvers. So let's give Gibson a game here. So to, just to see if we can... Uh, I know we were going to rest him for the rest of the season, but uh, we got to snap out of this four-game losing streak. So uh, St. Louis is a good team, 40, 25, and 13, as you can see. So we'll give uh, Gibson this game, and then we'll probably give uh, 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 Neuvers the rest of the, uh, the action there in the final three. So uh, let's go to uh, goals here. Let's go first period. Flames Blues, nothing second period. Uh, there we go. We get on the board. Wheeler and Tarasenko. Uh, final period. Do we pull off the win? Calgary Flames. Uh, we're tied. We're going overtime. So we do pick up a point. That's huge. Uh, Wheeler and Tavares. But we need this extra point here. Calgary Flames, come on. Uh, nothing in the shootout. And uh, we don't get it. So they get us. Uh, Swartz and Tarasenko. Monaghan does score. But uh, that is another uh, point that's lost for the Calgary Flames. Uh, we are now uh, have a five-game losing streak. So uh, not good right now. Uh, minus one for uh, Chillington or pick on the third pairing there. Um, so we might put Slater Cuckoo back in there. Uh, 897 for John Gibson. We'll put Neuvers back in that. I just thought maybe uh, bringing Gibson for a game would, would uh, snap us out of that uh, losing streak. But uh, clearly it has not. So uh, we got the Predators and then back-to-back -back games here against the Edmonton Oilers. So this is where it's going to uh, uh, get uh, interesting because... What am I doing here? 
uh, calendar. This is where it's going to get interesting because I, I wasn't even paying attention when I was looking at the calendar there that we close off the season with back-to-back -back games against the team that we're going to be playing for in the playoffs. So, or playing against in the playoffs. So, uh, not only are we probably going to be starting around the 9th or 10th of April, uh, maybe the 11th, against the Edmonton Oilers, but we're going to get a chance to uh, to test them out before the playoffs with a back-to-back -back game. So really, we could be playing up to uh, up to nine games against the Oilers. If that if that uh, first uh, playoff series goes seven games, uh, we could be uh, playing up to nine games in a row against Edmonton uh, in the month of April. That would be insane. I can't remember the last time that's, that's ever happened, uh, but that could be the case right here. So this is going to be interesting. So let's uh, let, let's jump right in then here, and uh, I'm gonna put Neuwirth back in goal, and let's uh, let's uh, f uh, finish off these three games uh, here uh, in the month of April uh, before uh, Edmonton. But let's put Neuwirth in net uh, at least for uh, for the final two, and maybe that final game against Edmonton. Uh, we'll see if maybe we put Gibson back in net. But uh, let's get to uh, let's sim up to this next game here against the Nashville Predators. Uh, James Neal is ready to come back against his former team, uh, so that is obviously good to see. Uh, let's take out Cedric Parquet. Uh, obviously, uh, we wanted to make lineup changes. Uh, now that we have Neal back, that freezes up to do it, so we'll drop Spencer Fu back down to his line there uh, with Hala and Ennis, and uh, we'll finish off the uh, final three games here uh, of the regular season with James Neal back, so that's good. So, uh, just taking a look here at the standings. Are we back up to second? In our, yeah, we are. Uh, so that's good to see. Edmonton must be losing. Uh, so we are back up to uh, second in our division, or where are we here? Uh, there we are. Uh, Edmonton, uh, yeah, so we have a game in hand, actually, on Edmonton, too. We have three games remaining. They just have the two games against us remaining. Uh, here we go. Uh, there we are. So, yeah, 95 points are both tied, but we do have the game in hand. So this is the game in hand against Edmonton. We need these two points because this could end up being the difference uh, right here. So uh, here we go. Flames and Predators. First period. There's Calgary on the board. John Tavares, one nothing Flames. Second period. Uh, we get a couple. They get a couple. We're still in the lead uh, by one goal. Gaudreau and Hala. Do we hang on in the third period? Come on, Flames. Uh, they've tied it up, and they've pushed us to overtime yet again. We are going uh, to extra time way too much. Uh, then I'd like to see here in the final, uh, what is it, final couple weeks of the regular season. Uh, so hopefully this time we can pull off the win. Come on, Flames, and we do. Jake Bean gets the OT winner. Finally, the Flames have snapped that five-game losing streak after that 11-game winning streak. Uh, but more importantly, we win that game in hand against Edmonton, uh, which we much, uh, much badly needed. A two-point night there for Wheeler, Bean, and uh, 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 Hamilton. Uh, uh, Bean also picks up the uh, OT winner. 8-9-7, not the best night for Northworth, but uh, he does pull off the win uh, for the Calgary Flames. So, um... That's obviously good to see. I believe that's his first win, too, as a Calgary Flame. Uh, so now we finish off the season with back-to-back -back games here against the Edmonton Oilers, the team that we're going to be facing here in the Stanley Cup playoffs. We're at 97 points. Uh, we are two points ahead of them. We have to try and stay ahead of them for home ice advantage. Uh, plus, we'd like to uh, obviously win out uh, our season. We have hit the 45 win mark as well, so that's good to see. But you can see the two teams, 45-28-7 and seven Calgary, 44-29-7 and seven, uh, for Edmonton. So practically identical record so uh, this is it here we go this is uh the the ultimate test right here this is the team we're going to be seeing in the stanley cup playoffs so let's uh let's uh play the two games uh remaining in the season against them let's see where we measure up against our uh our uh, future uh first round opponent. So first period, Flames Oilers. Uh, they get one from Connor McDavid. We get one for, or two from Tavares and Wheeler. Second period, Flames and Oilers. Lots of scoring going on. Uh, this could be uh, foreshadowing the upcoming uh, playoff series. It could be a high scoring series. Uh, Gaudreau, and uh, he does score twice. McDavid uh, gets his second. Lucci as well. We still have the lead heading into the third. Flames and we get it. TJ Brody, John Tavares gets his second. Uh, the Calgary Flames, 6-4 over the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that should lock up uh, or excuse me, clinch home ice for us there with the two points. Uh, we do not allow the Oilers to uh, get a point there. Uh, so a five-point night for Gaudreau and Tavares. Look at that. Wow. Uh, Johnny Gaudreau uh, and John Tavares. Your biggest players come out when it matters the most. Five-point night for each of them. That's what you like to see. Eight, five, uh, seven for Michael Northworth. So there's no point of putting uh, John Gibson back in that for the final game uh, because uh, we have clinched home ice advantage. Uh, yeah, 99 points there. Uh, they're at 95. Uh, the best they can do is 97. 
if they win that final game against us. But we have clinched a home ice advantage against the Edmonton Oilers, and uh, we are just one point away from hitting the 100-point plateau for the third straight season. Uh, we're not going to beat our uh, previous two seasons uh, with the Calgary Flames. Uh, lot, in the first season, we hit 101 points, I believe it was. Uh, and the second uh, season, or no, first season, sorry, we hit 103 points. Uh, we finished with a 49, 28, and 5 record. Last season, we finished with 101 points, 44, 25, and 13. Uh, so we have a chance to uh, hit the 100-point plateau. Uh, I guess we could hit 101 points, sorry. We could uh, tie our amount of points from last year. We pull off the win here against the Oilers in uh, the final game of the season. Uh, but uh, we won't eclipse that 101, and we won't uh, reach that 103 that we hit the year before, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we're not chasing the President's Trophy uh, for a third straight season. We're just trying to get ourselves uh, near the top of our division and conference and hopefully uh, 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 get ourselves a long playoff run because that's what it matters the most. So uh, this game means absolutely nothing. It is another game against the Oilers. Uh, like I said, we are seeing them uh, twice before our playoff series against them. Uh, but this game really doesn't mean anything. So it doesn't matter if we win or lose. But obviously, it would be nice to finish off the uh, regular season on a winning note. So first period, uh, they get a goal from Lucci. Second period, uh, we get a goal from Brody and uh, McDavid. We're going to have to find a way to shut down McDavid. He is going to be lethal uh, once again for them in this series. Uh, do we find a way to win it here in the third period? Uh, no, they beat us. So Adam Larson. Uh, so they do finish with 97 points. We finish with 99 points. I'm not even going to look at it there. Uh, but that is okay. Uh, we do. Uh, finish ahead of them we do fail to hit the 100 point plateau but like i said it doesn't really matter what we do in the regular season i just want to see it come playoff time so we know we're going to face the edmonton oilers there it is uh let's uh let's sim up uh, a day here till the regular season i guess it is officially over but let's just sim up one day here uh to ensure that it is and let's take a look here uh, before we end this episode off really quickly we're going to take a look at it in the next episode uh in the stanley cup playoffs round one against the oilers uh, more so but i just want to take a look at where all the teams finished uh we'll wor worry about the stats individual stats before the next uh uh, in the next episode, excuse me. So, uh, yes, it will be uh, the Calgary Flames and the uh, Arizona, or the Edmonton Oilers, excuse me. Let's go like this. Uh, uh, yeah, so, Flames and Oilers will battle it out. Uh, it looks like the Canucks will play the Coyotes or the Wild. Uh, it looks like they'll play the Coyotes. Uh, St. Louis should get the Wild, uh, and then it will be Winnipeg and Nashville in the first round as well. So, uh, not bad. The Flames do finish second in their division, second in their conference with 99 points. They tie the St. Louis Blues for second. Uh, excuse me, in their conference, uh, 99 points. Uh, we did have, uh, we had one, yeah, we had more wins, so we actually finished second. 46 wins for the Flames, uh, 43 for the St. Louis Blues. Uh, your Eastern Conference looks like this, Tampa Bay, Philadelphia, uh, New York, Washington, Columbus, Carolina, Florida, Buffalo, uh, Boston fails to miss as they are just uh, a couple points, or they are tied, uh, but uh, must lose the tiebreaker there with Buffalo. Uh, Pittsburgh uh, just misses as well. Montreal, New Jersey, Toronto, uh, your basement looks like that. Detroit and Ottawa down there. Uh, didn't look at the bottom teams in the West uh, down here. Uh, Vegas is the basement team this year. Dallas, Chicago down there again. LA, a lot of teams right here. Anaheim, San Jose, LA, Chicago, Dallas even, and Vegas. These are playoff teams any other given year. So it's a huge shakeup in the Western Conference. Uh, but the Calgary Flames, that's the main thing. We stay up there with 99 points. Uh, when we look at the entire league, uh, uh, there we are. We finished sixth in the entire NHL. So not bad. Uh, it was an up and down season, like I said, very inconsistent season for the Calgary Flames. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, we still finished top 10, almost in the top five of the NHL. That's where you want to be. Would have been nice to finish at number one where the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning finish. The reigning Stanley Cup champions now clinch the President's Trophy with 109 points. But hey, uh, you know, we weren't even that far back. We were just 10 points back of the Tampa Bay Lightning excuse me, for top spots uh, in the NHL. If we didn't go on that five-game losing streak, we would have been, uh, if we won all five of those games, obviously, we would have been up there tied with Tampa Bay. So that just shows you it was just five games that really made the difference uh, for the Calgary Flames. But again, it doesn't matter what you do in the regular season. It's all about the playoff time. So uh, we'll end this episode here because I think it's gone on pretty long, uh, obviously. So we want to uh, end this episode here. We'll hit the next episode in the Stanley Cup playoffs. We have the Edmonton Oilers in round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs and it should be a good series uh, but the Calgary Flames uh, finish off their season going 46 29 and 7 99 points third straight season in the Stanley Cup playoffs and they have the Edmonton Oilers coming up next uh, here in franchise mode <laughs>